It was one of those whirlwind kind of pinch me moments. Mm -hmm. You know, when you hear Shonda Rhimes saying the words, oh, we're going to create a spin-off and a, you know, a, a prequel of your character. It's like, okay, that's great. That's really great. And it's humbling. And you always want your work to be appreciated when it go, goes out there. But for Shonda Rhimes and Netflix to really invest in this character mm. and want to kind of explore and a deep, deeper dive into her and her history. And I think it was really clever to keep it in the world of Bridgerton, which was really great. So yeah, I was really excited. There is reason they wanted me. Why me? Charlotte, but there are worse fates than marrying the King of England. It was daunting because I think, you know, the show carries a lot of um, weight and it means a lot to a lot of people and it's incredibly important in, in moving and creating change in the industry as well. Um, but also really exciting. Um, I've not been on a job for just a, almost a year and a half. Um, so to get back on set was, was great. And then, you know, for it to be this job was, is yeah, ev everything I could expect and, and more. Great. Um, I uh, yeah I would second everything that you said I um, I didn't I didn't feel uh, maybe like a massive pressure to enter it because just because it felt like such a different beast um, and uh, there was so much work to do in the series but also on on that character that, that it it didn't um, it was like a great sort of fidget spinner you know like um, there was no time for my mind to mm. do any any other anxiety stuff. It was just like, okay, right, I've got to dive in, mm -hmm. uh, and it was a yeah, it was a pleasure the whole time. Um, well, for me particularly, mm. because because they're different timelines, mm. Ruth never gets to delve into that backstory <laughs> particularly, but it's really lovely to watch Connie kind of uh, um, realise some of that for me, if that makes mm. any sense. Mm. So. So yeah, basically because I, I'm always in the Regency timeline. So my story is kind of um, with what goes on in the Bridgerton current day, if you like. Mm -hmm. So I spend a lot of time with Adjua who, who plays Lady Danbury. Mm -hmm. So and it's, it's nice to kind of watch their relationship and see why their relationship is the way they are and what they mean to each other. So mm -hmm. my timeline is that the mm -hmm. backstory is lovely to see Connie develop. So I knew of her before I started Bridgerton. Um, the research that I did was the scripts and the world that this character was going to be put into. How was she going to, you know, be talking to people or relating to people and was the king going to be there and how, you do know what I mean? Because you can take a historical character and mould them and shift it into a world, you know, that you are creating. Bridgerton is a fantasy world. Queen Charlotte, yes, we have those historical kind of moments. Um, and I was talking to somebody the other day and he talked about winking. Do you know what I mean? That kind of winking to the history. And I think that's a really good way of describing it because it has a sense of play mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. Although we are having, you know, these little dots of history, we are playing around with them mm -hmm. in that sense. And because Queen Charlotte is still in the world of Bridgerton, the historical bit needs to relate to all of that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So there is room for Shonda to kind of mould and move and breathe in and out from the history to the modern. Not that closely at all, actually. Um, just because um, Tom, our director, and Sean, you know, the, the team at Shondaland um, were very um, kind of, st not stern, but they were very clear that they wanted uh, a very different Charlotte that we see in Bridgerton um, so they didn't kind of want me to um, emulate or have anything translated um, you know any of her characterizations um, that she kind of you know has taken on board and created such a, a, a beautiful character with um, but yeah basically ignore that and make my own um, which was really really fun um, but Golda was kind of always there to give me a hand mm. if I needed anything and a shoulder to, to lean on and we had a brief discussion about um, you know how she thought you know, Charlotte's kind of upbringing was in her, in her interpretation of Charlotte. Um, 
but yeah, there, there wasn't there wasn't too much kind of back and forth. Inclusion, representation, um, diversity, all you know, gender, mm -hmm. sexuality, all of that kind of stuff. And I think it's fascinating to be doing a period drama, something of history, mm -hmm. but yet through our storytelling, we can discuss these difficult, uncomfortable discussions, situations, ideas. Um, and I think that takes the pressure off a little bit. Do you know what I mean? That people can dress up as Queen Charlotte for Halloween. Mm -hmm. And that, that the idea of this biracial person, woman, can be then pushed out into the modern world. A young child, um, a biracial child or a black child of, of five or six years old dressing up for a birthday party as Queen Charlotte. That to me is moving the conversation forward mm -hmm. through storytelling, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Through affecting people by just telling the story in a really beautiful, fantastical way. I think that's the way forward mm -hmm. for our industry, mm -hmm. yeah. Indy and I w uh, met briefly before filming. Mm -hmm. um, she was rehearsing at Didcot Manor and it was a beautiful sunny day and we sat and we just talked and I was really um, keen for her to just take the role and make it her own. Mm -hmm. There was nothing that I could give her in that respect because Charlotte is assured of herself, herself and knows who she is. And I could see that India was completely like that. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So for her to take her own experiences and really celebrate them through this character was the most important thing. That's what Charlotte would do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know what yeah. I mean? That's what I have done. Mm -hmm. And to follow her instincts, mm -hmm. her natural instincts as um, an actress, you know, uh, and, and, and as a biracial woman. So, I mean, if she went off and like had a look at Bridgerton or whatever I was doing, or whether she was guided by a direction or something like that, you know, that's for her to say. But for me, I was very keen for her to take it and make it her own and just fly.